Good morning. So I'm uh, went through storage. Tried to go through everything I have in storage. Some of it I uh, was able to find in an uh, hodgepodge of boxes, but I was able to find all of these together. This is uh, uh, Swords and Sorcery. Uh, this was very, very cool. 2D6, old school Dungeons and Dragons 2D6, basically. Uh, absolutely one of my favorites. Um, played that a couple times with Dell and, and Kevin, and very, very cool. I got two. Remember, I generally, when they're cheap, I try to get a copy for play and a copy for table, or a copy for um, uh, me and a copy to put away. Uh, if I play locally, I like to have a copy for me and for the the kids. And, uh, and I, well, I don't play with kids, but the, the players. And then I found my sword and wizardry with them. Uh, this one I have somewhere else too. No idea where it's at yet. Because uh, I also cannot find my original, not original, my Holmes, Dungeons and Dragons original uh, that I got from Wayne's books. I haven't been able to find that yet either. So um, I'm assuming they're all together uh, when I find that box, if I ever find that envelope or box. And then my blue home stuff, uh, which is basically the OSR of Holmes, uh, d and Never played this. Um, well, I might have played it locally. No, I don't think I ever played these, but they're a fantastic OSR of Holmes. D and D, and I got I got those. I got uh, uh, I got the what do you call it? saddle stitched and whatever they're called. I got again two different copies of that purposely. Uh, one you know for me, one for the table. And again, we didn't play it. And then I did get the one. I think this is the one uh, module supplement. Found my romance of the Perilous Lands, which um, is is uh, I put this in a protective sleeve. Uh, we played, I think, one. I had hoped to play multiple sessions of this. Uh, we played one session, and unfortunately, we just never got back to it. I mean, it's uh, there's so many games out there, and so much stuff we all want to try. That just sometimes happens. But what I played of it, I really appreciated, and I and I really like the quality of the Osprey books. These are top, top quality books. Really, really great. Okay, I did fortunately find my Four Against Darkness. Uh, stuff. Uh, I found my Four Against Mars, which I have yet to ever play, but I did find that Four Against Darkness. Um, I found Warlock. This uh, again. This is this is. Uh, I think I shared. Yeah, I did do a review on Role Play Cafe. I was able to a couple days after I received the the. Um, I did the review and I received the game. Probably a week after I got the game, I was. It was just coincidental. I was able to play this with my uh, part of my old local group. Uh, I absolutely love this, and why I have never played it again, uh, again, probably mostly because I just we have too many games, and we have a lot of we have a lot of things. We had a lot of things in the offing. This um, truly inspired me. Um, one of my fondest memories in the last couple of years of gaming was the one-off I ran uh, for my local group. I can't remember if that was well. It's on it's on the channel, I think. Here, I'm pretty sure it is, but I have the hardback. I had the PDF and then the hardback came in the mail uh, when it was pressed. So I found those. I found my one of my all-time favorite of. I mean, this we played Island of Soul uh, locally for years uh, with this. We would kind of flip flop back and forth the Sword and Wizardry uh, uh, white box, and then we once we got this white box, this pretty much dominated our local play. I truly love this. Um, in my in my coming back and thinking about what I'll want to run in future. This is uh, high on the list of what I'm interested in GMing. Um, uh, is white box. Uh, let's see here, I found my maps. So there's Dredgewater. This was the original Dredgewater map my wife made up for me. Um, Kevin then took this concept into a computer program and made that really cool, really detailed Dredgewater map for me, which is very cool. But that's the original uh, map. And these are my original Broadlands. Remember, one of these is the real map. This is my map. This is the, this is my Broadlands campaign world map. This one again, handmade, uh, for me, right? I don't sit at the table with this generally. It's it might be with me, but it's not out easily to. And the uh, the reason I have two maps is the players get one because they're somewhat ignorant of the world, so they have a gist of where things are at. But not every detail is exact for the players' map. So they may be headed to you know because generally the players start. In one of these major cities, Ralnor, Carlton, maybe Harvest Town, and then places like Grand Fork and Gondolin would be, in a way, outside the players. These are places they would have grown up hearing about, and places they know of, and stories. 
but it might not be exactly here, right? These places might not be exactly. So they head for that, might not quite get it right. So this was my player's map, you can see PM. So anyway, that's my uh, Broadland campaign maps. Uh, and I just love this, my, you know, I'm not an artist at all, but I love this kind of ink sketching. Uh, it's, just, it's just, I just love it, I've loved it. My whole life my wife was able to do something uh, for me like that, which was very cool. And then my Broadland campaign books, which all my written Broadland stuff, population of cities, all my... The one day I'm hoping to type this up, I don't know, maybe one day be able to uh, provide it as a PDF, but uh, I haven't done it yet. It's all hand scribbled, so part of it i got to go through and decipher some of my own stuff. And I add to these, so not all the pages are... This whole book isn't totally filled. Um, I leave the back half of the books a lot of times for what happens on their campaigns because that can influence what I might consider as part of the lore and part of the world. I know the Soul is a better example of that. As here you can see I actually, I think here you can see where I was taking, yep, session one notes. So I was taking notes from the session one that actually becomes now part of the lore of the island of Sewell. Um, and then I would transcribe those over. But some of the, you know, the map and some of the stuff here in the beginning is and then, of course, I take session notes as they would play. Very cool. Uh, ironically, this was hard to handle at the table. This hardback stuff, I didn't want to. So I started using just notebook paper I could fold over and staple for the session. And then I would come home and try to transcribe it. I got so far behind in our Island of Soul campaigns locally that, that I have a box similar to this full of the session. And when I do sessions, I'll prepare what I prepare, index cards or whatever. If I have a world, I don't have to prepare so much a session because if we have the world information, then they can kind of go any way they want to go. That's that's open sandbox gaming. But uh, the session notes, then I will keep for everything that's gone down. And then I'll fold it over, staple it, date it, you know, when we played it, who was involved. And then that goes in a, like a box like this. And then I can pull them out anytime I want to look back on the sessions. It's very cool. But uh, the problem is I haven't been able to transcribe it. And at some point you realize, why am I retranscribing session notes? Uh, so this is kind of behind as far as what all went on. Okay, now we got to look at... So the sad part is I couldn't find... Oh, there's my other... Again, as I said, I always like to buy two. One, either one for me and one for others. Or one, uh, one for me and one for keeping safe somewhere. Found those, but uh, the sad thing is I could not find some of my... And then there's my pen and paper printout. I also have this actual from Lulu, but I could not find it. I could only find these printed. And here was my PDF version of Four Against Darkness before I received my books. So I have that as well. But I could not find, and this is terrible, I could not find my Appa hockey, my Appa football. And that's, that's very bad because I love them and they were very expensive games. So I'm a little bit irritated. I haven't been able to find that yet, but I do have a box that says Appa on it right there. I hope to God Appa is in that. Uh, and I could not find um, my pen and paper books of pen and paper football that are like this, you know, that are that are actually manufactured. They've got to be in a folder or a notebook or something somewhere, uh, or just another box with a ton of stuff I, ha I can't readily see. Here's my four against darkness. Uh, oh, is that my four? Oh, I didn't find my four against darkness notebook of my campaigns, did I? Or is this it? No, oh, shoot! So I didn't find my four against darkness uh, campaign books. Okay, so let's see what's in this. This has not been opened yet. I could not find Status Pro or Title Bout. Um, many of you may have seen that video back in the day. I ordered that from eBay, unopened, 1978 or 1980, uh, unopened, brand new. And so I paid a pretty penny for that as a collector's item and I can't find it. So somewhere I've either put it somewhere so, so what I considered so safe from water damage and so safe from I like double packaged it somewhere and I cannot find it readily. Um, I I don't know where Title Bout's out, but I did not get rid of Title Bout, which I would not have. It's my favorite boxing game of all time. And again, it was uh, unopened, but I don't know where it's at. So it could be in one of these, by the way. Uh, but I think this is. So what is this? Dang it, I tell you. Sorry, I know it's always fun to watch people try to open packages. It makes them dizzy, I'm sure. Okay, there's some Appa. That's good news. That's Appa Dice Cup. Okay, there's some score sheets. And it looks like my Appa 
football teams uh, or hockey. Whew, okay, that's a good sign. I found some teams. Map our team. Hallelujah. Now we have to hope to God. This is the Apple games. Uh, like I said, they're not they're the games themselves, just basic sets that come with a couple of teams. They're they're not they, I mean they're I think they're $29.99 or something, so they're not, you know, horrible. But to order these seasons, complete seasons, every player that played on every team that year, they're not cheap, you know, but they're not cheap to manufacture, so I understand that. Okay, so let's hope this is Apple. You can see I had so it did used to say title bout status pro football. Um, it used to have Glory Days Boxing in it when it was in storage with Legends of Boxing, and then I must have put Title Bout or Stratomatic in it, and then it says Appa highlighted. So I have a feeling Appa went in here. I, here's the problem. Where the heck did Title Bout and st st that go? So let's see. You can see the method of my madness as I put stuff away. When I'm playing something, I keep it out. If I'm not readily playing something, uh, when I'm not... Hey, sorry, I know this is no fun for people but when I'm readily playing something it stays out if I'm not going to be playing something if I'm not going to be playing something it uh, I don't know what address is on here Amazon says okay if I'm not going to play something and I know I'm not going to play it for a long time or if it's like say an off season I'm just not in the mood I put it I'll put it away I only have a tiny room here I mean this room is about 10 by 16 maybe, so it's not a lot of room in this little den. I have no wall space, no shelf space in my home either. And look at that. Hallelujah. So there's my Apple. This should have 1980, uh, 80's greatest players set, or it should have the 1958 teams in it. Because one of them I was playing when I boxed it up, I think it was the 80's tournament. Yeah, 1957. Okay, so this might have... This looks like it has 58. Yeah, Alex Webster. Look at that. 1958. I love... My favorite season in the history of pro football is 1958. Uh, Bears. Okay. So, there is 58. That means those others in there are hockey and um, uh, 1980s decade set. And then there's hockey, which I just started getting into... And was really digging it. It's uh, a little time consuming. But there's Apple Hockey. And uh, I really did dig this. Um, I just wasn't, I'm just not a huge hockey fan. And I haven't had a chance to per get really good at it. But there's hockey. And this should have get teams in it. I think I ordered the 19, I want to say 1960s. Because I love old anything. Old baseball, old hockey. I'm just an old school guy. No, nope. okay, that's the, this is the teams that came with it. Vegas obviously came with it. Tampa Bay came with it. But I think I have the 60, let's see, Boston, yeah, oh no, 53-54 set, because I just love old sports, it's it's something about it's very romantic to me, um, not necessarily was it the best version of the sport, but it was, it's a romantic kind of, it's almost fantastical for me, it's, it's got a sense of fantasy or, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, there's a distance which makes it romantic. And then, of course, this I traded this. I traded. I can't remember what I traded, but I traded somebody in the community. Uh, I can't remember what I traded. Oh, I traded them my 1968 NFL, uh, AFL, uh, Apple football, and they sent me their soccer teams. I ordered soccer, but only with a couple of teams. And um, they sent me the wrong football book. It was kind of bizarre. Anyway, but he then traded me for my Apple 68 AFL, NFL set. And I was able to get a whole season of, of soccer, which I have yet to ever play. This came, I looked it over, I tried to read the rules, and then of course I was doing other things. And then this ultimately had to be set aside for a later date when I'm able to study it. But I'm looking forward to a little soccer. I have never, I, well I do own a couple of quick play soccer games, but I've never owned a soccer game that's full simulation. So we'll see how this goes. And I was able to fit all those in this box. Now I know why Stratomatic Status Pro Title Bout and Status Pro Football came out of it because these all fit nicely in this box. I do not know where Status Pro and Title Better out. That is a big problem as, again, Status Pro, somebody in the community sold me for $50, a 1980, uh, I think it was 82 set, which is this, my favorite Status Pro set of all time. And he sold it to me for a very fair price of, I think, $50 even. 
Uh, title bout, of course, I got it unopened, 1981 version, I think, unopened when I got it from eBay, opened it up, and uh, love it, but I've put it somewhere I can't find, so that's all I can find so far, folks, um, or you can see, oh wait, no, no, I got another box here, let's spin this around, let's see what's in this Rubbermaid, I was able to pop this open and get an idea of what's in it, put my app off down, because I'm going to be playing app off uh, steadily over the course of the next few months. That's my favorite football game. All right. So let's see if we can see. I don't know if this is fun for anybody, but let's see what is in here. Okay, I think you can see that, right? All right. So we've got, that got warped pretty good in the box. Uh, low Fantasy Gaming, Low Magic High Adventure. This is an OSR, pretty cool. Um, it was one of those that um, kind of tries to take a modern D20 and kind of old school it, if I remember right. I haven't played it. Uh, my age games, this for a long time is one of my favorite modern games, the Dragon Age system. Uh, of course, eventually um, I got the generic Fantasy Age of the Dragon Age 3 dice 6 system. And then, of course, Modern Age. These are two of my favorite games. I love this system. I always did. Many people don't, but I do. I had picked up Numenera. The, I don't remember which version this is. This I think it was the first version. And uh, this is very, very cool. Monty Cook. Um, but I've never played it. I read through it. I thought it was pretty cool. I like the, the world. It's kind of neat, but I haven't played it. And then, of course, my paperback of Dungeon Crawl Classics. Look at that thick beast, right? That's mostly tables, right? This game is loaded with a ton of tables, spells, etc. Very cool. I have never GM'd it. I probably never will. And I've only had a chance to play, I think, once or twice. Um, so, that's that. Uh, oh, this was Steve. This was Steve's character in Blood and Bone, I believe. Oh, no, this was uh, Castles and Crusades, Carrick. This was Steve, or I don't think it's Harold's. Wow, boy, that's taking me way back. And then, I, but I don't have Castles and Crusades anymore. And then the Fantasy, the Fantastic Heroes and Witchery Retro RPG. This is pretty cool. Again, a lot of great stuff in these games. Again, never played this one. This is, I want to say this is a 1E, kind of a uh, retro of 1E. One, one Am I right about that? AD&D 1E, maybe? Uh, but very, very deep, very cool. Never jammed it, haven't played it. Uh, okay, this is some... I don't know exactly what. Oh, that's my module. This artwork was done by Andy years ago for my module. This was the module I was trying to write. So I wrote this module for Labyrinth Lord when I first came back to gaming after 21 years away. And, uh... I wrote it for the local guys I hadn't played in 20 years, and I actually was pretty anal about it. I wrote a whole module, and uh, was then attempting to uh, to turn it into Iron... I was trying to then convert it into Iron Falcon or Basic Fantasy. I think it was Iron Falcon at first. Uh, matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure this is all the Iron Falcon. And I wrote it, I rewrote it, and converted it to Iron Falcon. I had hoped uh, maybe Chris Gonerman would be interested in it, and Chris Gonerman then would be able to use it in one of his adventure anthology books or something, or, or at least provide some written material for to support Iron Falcon. Um, I can't remember. Then I left after, unfortunately, uh, Harold's uh, death. I took a long break then because I was, you know, it was a very, very sad time. Um, and uh, the, all the maps, the cover and the maps were all provided by Andy. And uh, of course the written module and idea and story and everything was obviously mine, and there's his, right, so I just printed it out so I'd have it handy to glance at. I don't know what else that is, nothing maybe. And then we've got an old, old, old play action sports games. There's my white hack, paperback. Never, uh, well, we, I think we tried it. We may have tried it one night, I can't remember. Um, there's my Savage Worlds. I still have yet to, to, um, uh, play this. I th I can't remember. I think we did one night where we had a, we had one of our nights because we normally we'd play two games in a night, 
like we would do our Island of Sewell for a couple hours, take a dinner break, and then come back and try something. The guys would be remotely, would let me, because my local guys really wanted to only play OSR D20. Uh, and I can't remember, I think we did a bank, I had like a bank heist idea, that, and they made uh, modern characters, and we did kind of a 1950s bank heist scenario, uh, if I remember right. I can't remember. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember if that was... Anyway, and then we did. Uh, we were going to test play Scott's um, adventure, and I can't remember if we did that. I can't remember which one we did. We may have test played Scott's adventure. Uh, Scott had made a module that I was, uh, that he made me privy to. I, I, I can't remember if we did that one or if we, if we played my little bank heist thing, but white hack hardback and the white hack notebook. So you can see I thought I had a big, I was going to have a lot of great fun with white hack as I got all three versions. Uh, one was for them and then uh, the hardback light and then the big boy. So what, what's the difference in the big one? Uh, you've got dot note for, for stuff. Um, so you can see the game is only so many pages long, but then there's a whole ton to do your notes and your maps and your adventures, and so that's kind of a neat hardback. I love this um, idea. Slipcover, there's just something truly classic. I mean, if I if I had my way, and I don't know how big, I have no idea how big Dark Age of Man would be, I would love a hardback like these old library books back when I was a kid in school, you'd go in and get a book at the bookstore library and have a slip cover and it'd have this kind of faux, you know, it's just, this is just classic. This is like classic, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. And, um, to me, this is the perfect book and it's the perfect old school book, right? That slip cover with that, with that, what is it called? The nylon material or whatever. And it's a really, I mean, it's just like those books you would get, you know, just amazing. Uh, and this is great, cheap, easy to, uh, you know, uh, get, and it's cheap and easy to handle, but I would love to do Dark Age of Man in like a hardback with a slip cover. That would be so cool. But who knows? I, mean, I don't know if we're going to publish it. It just depends on whether it's any good or not. There's Play Action Football. This sucker, man. Uh, I picked this up way back in the day. I think it became a, another game now, but back in the day, it was some guy in... 2002, uh, play action sports games in San Francisco. I had to order this via some like uh, it was like a play by what was it? It was it was I think I found a website and had to order it by mail and he shipped it in this bag. You know, you got a letter and everything. This is 2002, and it's a it's a dice it's a two dice six um, football game. Kickoffs. Uh, inside runs, passes, has everything on it. The rules are on the other side. It's very, very cool paper. And I think there's a company that's that's bottom out, or are they just changed their name and they're doing? I think Jason Mayberry he was buying the basketball, and uh, so I think this is still around. And it's been modernized a little bit. Yep. And here's um, Fester. This is this was Tony's Steve Tony. Yep. Steve was Caruso. Uh, Fester was Tony. God, Tony. Jeez, that was a one-off. So I still have their characters from Castles and Crusades? Yeah, here's Harold. Oh, boy, that's sad. Juba. Wow. What is this? I don't know if this is Castles and Crusades. Boy, that's kind of... Well, it says C and C here. Ranger level one, Castles. Boy, I don't remember playing Castles and Crusades. But we played a lot of games over the years. Well, that's sad. Look at that. Um, these are mine. So they would give me their characters, and then I would jot down their characters. This is my, uh, this is my notes from them. This is not Harold's actual character. I mean, it's his character, but it's not his handwriting. It's not his sheet. It's, it's what I would transcribe over. Level four thief. Level four fighter. This was Tony. God, we must have done like a just a one-off. I made. I said, go ahead and make level four characters because I Tony never played with us. Maybe once, twice. Caruso, Steve. Now after Harold's, after Harold, uh, um, after Harold's passing, Steve ultimately moved back to Texas. 
Um, I met Steve and Harold through Robert. Robert moved to the front range and took a job that was years ago. And who is this? This might have been Robert. So you got Steve, Tony, Harold. Uh, oh, that could be Brian's. This could have been Brian's character. Half orc. I don't know. That might have been Brian's. Wait a second. ER 16, EV 23. Burdened. Dirk and a wolf spear. What the heck game was this? Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, I'm falling over here. Ranger. Well, I don't know. That's uh, why that's even in here. Boggles my mind. My backup white box. You can see how pristine this is compared to the one I used. So again, you can see that's my... Uh, what's this? This looks like something my mother gave me. I don't know what the hell that, <laughs> that is. I don't know why it's in here. Oh, Apes Victorious. So these are the guys that make uh, Labyrinth Lord, Goblinoid Games. I bought this uh, last year and never uh, got around to uh, even talking about it or playing it. But it's Planet of the Apes, basically. Um, but it's slightly different than Labyrinth Lord. They changed the rules a little bit. But it's basically Planet of the Apes. Pretty cool. Oh, Blue Hack. Jeez. Wow, Blue Hack. I don't know if we ever did this. Somebody told me, hey, if you like if you like Prentice, you gotta do blue hacks. So I snatched it and it's very actually it was very interesting compared to the other hacks. It's and I say that because it's my cup of tea in that there is just they aren't wasting any time with extraneous information or rules. It is a hack. It's ready to rock and roll. There's a lot about this hack I liked at the time. I don't remember reviewing it, and I and I don't believe we ever tried it, but it's sad because this is probably one I would love to to GM and play. This might be the, the only hack I probably would really get into. But again, I, I, I'm speaking from a, a little bit of ignorance there. Tiny Dungeon, Player's Guide. Get that. There's a D6 game for you. Ah, and this was my working. This was the game I was, this was the book I was using for our, uh, this was my book for reading, using at the table when I was uh, preparing my Romance of the Perilous lands and was running uh and I, yeah, I think you can see that game on this channel roleplay cafe so there you have it and uh so you can see i bought one i liked it so much that i ordered a second that is in a plastic envelope again uh, as if it's maybe one day it will be a, oh, 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 oh there they are i was wondering what happened to these this is scott's all right these are amazing so scott founded accuracy I ordered these. He made four narrative deck action chase, a chase deck for uh, Savage Worlds. So you shuffle these, and these become your chase cards. But they're they they tell you what's going on in the chase. You flip them over, it tells you what the number is, and boom. Uh, I bought them because I figured for certain I would be playing a modern version. So Savage Worlds to me, I think again I'm going to speak way out of turn here because I haven't done much with it. I think it's the perfect pulp game. I think it would be great for like Indiana Jones or Secret Agent or uh, so the idea of chases, but you could do chases on horseback and carriage, etc. But I thought when I run Savage Worlds, it would be kind of a pulp 30s, 40s era game and these chase cards would be perfect. But Scott, um, Scott, Bounded Accuracy, uh, he's got a, matter of fact, I think he's written his own couple of OSRs as well. I cannot recall the names of them now, but there's his cards for Savage Worlds. And then, of course, I loved this. We ran this one time on the channel. You can see that. Like, one time, I absolutely love this. It's an OSR. It's kind of a... Uh, again, this this to me was... This is kind of what I thought uh, hacks should be. Um, great. What I liked about this was... It's a nice, good quality book, like Romance of the Perilous Lands, to some degree. Color, great art. Uh, they didn't waste a lot of time. But this is a hack, basically. A simple, simple game, you know, and you roll up stuff as you go. But what's cool is it it, it, it gives you enough of the world, enough of the, the, the fiction. You know, you are treasure hunters. You work on behalf of, in a way, the gods. The gods only hire you through proxies. You never meet the gods, so to speak. I call them gods, but they're, there's another name for them. And then you go on the science fiction planet. But what's really cool about this is there's a time mechanism. When you enter... The solar system, you have to get to the planet, you have to infiltrate the, 
the area and then you have to get what the treasure is for them and get out before the people show up that would ultimately kill you or cause problems. But you're also dealing with the, the Golgotha that you're investigating. This has got a very cool time mechanic, and we did this on the channel. That It's called uh, Icebreakers, I think. Uh, this was great fun. These are games I'd love to get back to. Romance of the Perilous Lines in this, I wouldn't have purchased. I mean, these are two I thought I was going to play a really long term. Um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. I am 52. I don't know. So, there it is. So that box turned out pretty good. Savage Worlds. I don't even see prep paper for this, so that could be in another that could be in another box. But there you are, folks. You've seen what I've been able to find. Thanks. Bye.